welcome to Chloridoscope 2023. We're so happy to have you here. And um, we have an amazing event planned by our state chairs um, today. And I really hope that you enjoy what we've got for you. My name is Jess Carey. I'm the executive director of the ICA. Um, and this event uh, was a bunch of labor of love from our state chairs. Um, and I'm so happy that it's continued on for three years and it just gets better every single year. So um, we're gonna talk more about ICA if you're not a member uh, later on today. And we have uh, links for all of the sessions will be uh, on the ICA website and I'll put that in the chat for you, but I'm going to turn it over to our state chair coordinator, Don Lindblade and her team to tell you about what's in store today. Hi, I'm Dawn Limblade. I am the state chair of Oklahoma, and I have the pleasure of being the coordinator for all the state chairs in the International Clarinet Association. We are so excited that you're here. This is our third year of Chloridoscope, and this event came about um, during the pandemic as just a, a need for us to connect to our clarinet community and to have a learning opportunity that was free and available to all. So we're so happy that you're here and that this event is continuing. Um, we have performances, master classes, clinics today, and we received some amazing entries into our uh, competitions. And we're going to be able to announce those winners for you today at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Dr. Julianne Kirk Doyle, and she's going to do an overview of today's sessions. Thank you so much, Don. I'm Julian Doyle. I'm the state chair for the state of New York. Um, and you see in the chat, um, Jessica shared with you the schedule. I'm just going to go through that, but if you want to follow along. So we're at our info right now. And then following um, this, this little introduction, you will hear some student performances featuring um, a good variety of repertoire starting at 1230. Then you will have the state chair recital at one o'clock um, at 2.15. Julia Heinen will present a master class. And then at 3.30, you can hear Jonathan Kohler and David Cook give some live presentation. Um, then at uh, 4.30, we, we will have a listening panel where we'll discuss recordings and listening. And then our closing ceremony at 5.30, where we'll announce the winners. So welcome, and I hope you enjoy the day. Wonderful. Um, so we're going to get started with our next class in just a few minutes. Jessica, did you have anything else you wanted to share just about how we're going to move from event to event today? So on our page that I've posted in the chat, uh, and I'll post it again just in case you joined late, each session has its own link, and we'll be going back and forth between Zoom and YouTube, where there are some pre-recorded sessions for you, um, which will be premiered there. Uh, so you can grab the resources and the program information. It's not only pasted in the, each session and also on YouTube, but there's a PDF if you'd like to read uh, in that format as well. Uh, uh, for the listening panel, we also have a recommended list of recordings, and that's there in place of the program book, but the program is also pasted in the chat. So uh, that's basically the structure of today's event. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the day or difficulties, you can feel free to email me. I will be in my email pretty much all day. And it's edo at clarinet.org, also in the chat. Um, thank you all for sharing where you're joining us from. This is um, put on by the US state chairs, but of course, everybody all over the world um, in clarinet can enjoy the sessions that we're providing today. If you miss anything or have something going on and you don't get to see something, those recordings will be up on YouTube later um, e this evening and early tomorrow, depending on how quickly I can get them edited and uploaded. So um, I do want to take just a second to thank our ICA board. Uh, for making these kinds of events uh, possible and for supporting the state chairs and putting this together. And of course, thank you to our generous sponsors for all of the prizes that the winners of our competitions will be receiving. And a special thank you to our sustaining sponsors for the 2023 calendar year, Buffet Crumpon, U F. Arthur Upel Clarinets, and Van Doren. Um, their sponsorship supports all of the events for the 2023 calendar year, and we could not uh, go forward without their support, of course. So um, do our state chairs want to say their name and tell us where they are state chair from? That sounds great. Um, why don't I just kind of call on people just to make it go a little quicker. So um, Julia, would you go first? Julia Heinen, state chair of California. And Beth? Beth Weeman, state chair from Maine. Steven?
There we go. Stephen Klamowski, state chair from Vermont. And Cassie? I'm the, I'm the state chair from Virginia, Virginia, West Virginia, and DC. Sorry, Number that two, was Cassie. Cassie. Now here's Cassie. Cassie. I misunderstood. Sorry, Cassie. All right, Cassie? Okay, we'll skip. Bob? Bob Springs, state chair from Arizona. Okay, and Christopher? Uh, Christopher Nichols, state chair from Delaware. And Jonathan? Jonathan Kohler, state chair from Massachusetts. Did that come through this time? Yeah, we heard you. All okay. right, Melena. <laughs> Hello, Melena McLaren, state chair from Louisiana. And Jackie? Hi, Jackie McElwain, state chair from Mississippi. And Teresa? Let's see. Teresa Martin, state chair from Wisconsin. Okay, that's the whole list that I can see. If there's anyone that I missed, will you just call out? <laughs> I think we're close. Jesse. Hi, Jesse Krebs, uh, state chair from Missouri. Thank you. All right, we are all so excited that you're here today. If you want to pop in the chat where you're coming from, uh, we'd love to, to see that and just kind of represent the area that this event has touched. Um, go clarinet, that's right. Thank you guys so much. And we're very excited for our first event. So we will give you a bit of a chance to grab something to drink, some coffee, some, some water, whatever you need. And I'm going to post the link for the YouTube uh, session that's happening in about 21 minutes uh, over on YouTube. So we'll post that here. Follow this link. It'll take you directly to the premiere. And we also have a chat there that you can engage and chat with each other and get to know one another. Uh, and we will see you in about 21 minutes. Um, following that, we'll come back to... Uh, and I think it's another session on YouTube right after that, the state chair recital. So we'll share the link for that. Uh, oh, yeah, we could do some questions. We do have time. Does anyone have any clarinet questions for our state chairs? No questions, really? <laughs> Maybe I have a question. Um, I wanted to know how who might be the longest member of the ICA that's at this <laughs> this event right now and I think it might be Julia and Bob or and wow. uh they should be and a Steve, how many and years Steve. have you guys been a member 1976 Ooh. yeah about the same time I joined when I went with John Muller to Denver once I I wasn't I don't know if I was a member but I played with the I played at the convention in 1979 in Denver that's awesome and well, then Thompson would have had to have been a member. So if he played, he was a member. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> well, I was part of an orchestra. It was the, it was oh, the, it so was the Colorado not. Phil. So maybe okay. not. Yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe I was. <laughs> hey, I'm getting up there too. I would say 1985, I joined maybe. Well, Larry, Larry posted that he's been a member since it started. So Larry, what year was that? This is a quiz. It's, it's a, a quiz. quiz. <laughs> <laughs> because we're in the, the 50th. Yeah. 50th this year is our 50th anniversary of the ICA, and we'll be yeah. celebrating in Denver um, the, the location where the first conference happened. So um, we will share more information about that. We are looking for volunteers. You get in for free if you'd like to come to the conference. Um, this is going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing event. So uh, that's happening in early July in uh, Denver. So Larry does win. I think so. <laughs> well, I should say I was I, I don't think I was a member, but Leon Rushanoff uh, recommended I go. And this was in 72 or 73. So I, I don't know about the 50th anniversary being 72, but I was in Denver. Ray Corellis was there and. Um, lots of other people. I was not a member then. I joined probably a couple years later, and I was a member off and on for uh, you know several years. Um, yeah, 
this is a wonderful organization. So um, we're just so excited to share information about it and to tell you more this afternoon about the upcoming event in Denver. So if you enjoy today, you're going to really love Denver this summer. Um, awesome. Does anyone else have any other questions? Trivia? <laughs> I have a question. What okay. is everyone's favorite uh, piece for clarinet? <laughs> Ooh. That's hard. Brahms trio. Brahms trio. <laughs> I was going to say it's an impossible question, but Melina had an answer, so <laughs> it's not impossible. Since she's I mean, here, I would say anything by Teresa Martin. That's right, Teresa Martin. <laughs> I think mine might be the WC Rhapsody as well, Julianne. Mm. But I don't think that would have been the same answer even 10 years ago. I think it changes. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm agreeing with Poulenc. Mm. I, love, I love the Poulenc Sonata. Everyone yeah, I read and hear the next one, I think, oh wait, no, that one. Oh wait, no, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Least least favorite? Least favorite's easier to answer right now for me. Yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Vaber. Poor Vaber. I think we're getting mixed up in the chat about what's yeah. favorites and not favorites because I'm right. seeing some things and I'm like, that's nobody's least favorite. <laughs> Vapor's overplayed, <laughs> but it's overplayed badly, let's face it. <laughs> I don't know. What's favored for me depends on the time frame, just depends on what I feel like working on then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or at that time. But a month later, I feel like something else. Mm -hmm. And then that's my favorite for that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love a lot of um, Schumann stuff. As for serious music, that's probably my most favorite stuff. I think that I like really cheesy romantic music. So I like the Brook eight pieces a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fills oh, a spot yeah. in my soul. <laughs> it's great. The chat's extra fun. I, I, ha I haven't talked to Larry Lieberson in many years, but when we were on concert tour with the U.S. Army Field Band, we used to do summers at uh, Greenfield Village with the Detroit Symphony. And Larry was playing principals and he'd come hang out with us and stuff. And uh, so it's really fun to see him here today. Fabulous, fabulous player. I love Julia's my least favorite are composers who do not proof their clarinet parts, but that would be just about everybody, wouldn't it? Well, I have to comment. I'm tired of playing new music that has a key signature of D major, which has no relevance to D major. <laughs> That's one of my things. I've been trying to teach the composers that we don't like playing with two sharps if it doesn't actually have two sharps right we should make it all our mission yes so um somebody put posted in the chat about the schedule for clarinet fest and when that will be announced it will be announced pretty soon um so keep your eyes peeled and there'll be an email announcement i'm sure when the schedule is completed yeah i believe that the deadline for rearranging all the rooms because i ended up stealing a room away from the performance spaces for vendors because we have too many vendors <laughs> which is always a good problem to have everybody wants to show you what they have um so i think the deadline is the 20th so i'm hoping to have at least a grid schedule to share with you all about the festival next week so that's really exciting um it's it's very packed we'll say and we'll be really cozy in this very small hotel <laughs> <laughs> That just means that we'll all see each other a lot. You'll have a lot of familiar faces from being at this event. <laughs> Anybody else have any general comments or clarinet related questions that they want to, that is burning in their mind that they really need to ask at this time? Well, this is a little geeky, but I guess this is where we are. Um, 
I'm working on the. Uh, I'm working with a student on a Dona Tony Claire. Yeah. Anybody has any expertise in that? Um, let me know because I think there are some misprints and stuff. Or if anybody knows, but that's you know. So if or if somebody I can get in touch with that might have some expertise in this. John Chipola just did a talk on it a couple years ago. Hey, I will. Uh, the guy who 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 did one of the early performances of it was um, um, uh, Philippe Philippe Couper. Yeah. When when he, I think it was when Donna Tony passed away, they asked him to do it, and so he had to learn it like very quickly, and then performed it. And then ever since then, he's performed it a lot. There's two questions in the chat. Um, if someone wants to jump in. Uh, one is how to prevent cracks. My clarinet has cracked three times in the past year. And then the second question is, are plastic reeds good? So if anybody wants to jump in on those. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> uh, Heather Carlson just posted a great blog post about um, preventing clarinet cracks. Uh, it's on her website, H. Carlson Woodwinds. I'll post it in the chat. And it was a great article, a great blog post on that, which might be helpful. So good question and important. I'll post the, uh, how to spell her name and try and find the link real quick to post. I could, I could field questions on uh, synthetic reads, uh, but, I, but I've been using Legere reads since around 2000, but I don't know the other brands. I have tried one other brand, um, but what specific questions? I, you, there's nothing you can do on them provided they are, you know, fit your mouthpiece and, you know, just your internal, just like with other reads, some people sound better on some reads than other reads. And I think the same thing, some people sound great on them and I've heard people not sound so good on them. I think also I there's some confusion with the plastic reads because there's some plastic covered reads, which are reads that are dipped in plastic. And those I'm not as much of a fan of, but the reads we're talking about now are the synthetic reads, for example, Legere or Diderio Venn reads. And that's a little bit different than plastic. I have a little bit of, exp of experience on the Venn, but you know, again, it's so much dependent on your mouthpiece and your internal you know, voicing and all that kind of stuff. For me, the Venn was good. It was very responsive. I just didn't like the sound as much for myself as on the Legere Reed has a lot more cover to the sound, which I personally like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, but they were certainly super responsive. I know Diane Barger is playing on a um, Legere. She's been, I mean, for the past couple of years, I mean, she sounds great on them. Denise she would, does. Uh, yeah. Ricardo, uh, Ricardo. Oh, right, yeah. Richard Hawkins plays on them. I mean, lots yeah, of Yeah, for a long time, yeah. yeah. And Venzel Fuchs, he plays a Viennese mouthpiece, which is very different and small, but he's playing on the on uh, BK's um, uh, plastic reeds. He was playing on Legere for a while. All the Vienna and all the Berlin guys were for a while. I don't know that they still are, but you know they they did a pretty good long stint. What about um, why can't I think of his name at uh, uh, Cohen? Um, Frank. Frank Cohen, yeah, Frank long time. Uh, no, Steve Cohen, yes. long, long, long time Legere user. I think some of the benefits that come from Legere is just not being as affected by the weather. Um, so I have some in my case, especially for when I'm traveling, if I'm traveling to a different altitude, um, I have different strengths so that I can be prepared for that. So I think it's great if you have some that you like, they, they'll be around for a while. And if your, your reeds are being really affected by humidity and altitude, then you have some options. So um, I don't I don't believe in finding one read and playing it forever and ever and ever still rotate, even if I have a synthetic or a plastic read. Um, but I think they're great, especially for that and for playing in a pit if you don't have time to to wet that read. So I would suggest that you try them out. Yeah, a great place to try these synthetic reads is at Clarinet Fest, because all of these makers <laughs> will be there um, with the, with their reads for you to try because sizing can be different and 
you can make adjustments to a synthetic reed, but you should probably read a little bit about how to do that uh, before you take a knife to it. Uh, but there are people who make adjustments and a lot of people really like synthetic reeds for bass clarinet. Um, and I find the bass clarinet synthetic reed is, is really great for me, but I prefer a cane for B flat playing. Um, so it's really just a personal preference. And so we really encourage you to reach out to all of the different brands that make synthetic reeds and give it a try just so that you know, because it's really good to be up to date. Um, and if you're a teacher or plan to be a teacher, um, you'll have a student who will ask you. And so it's really good to have that knowledge in your quiver so that you can um, explain to them the benefits and drawbacks to each of those different types of things. They can be affected slightly by the um, things like altitude and um, uh, humidity or air pressure a little bit. If you think of it in terms of molecules, do you know what I mean? That the reeds going against. So higher altitude, fewer molecules, regular altitude, more molecules. So the size may change or our, the resistance, the, the resistance feel could change. I ask Alexa every day, whoops, I shouldn't have even said the name. <laughs> I ask Alexa every day about um, air pressure and uh, humidity. <laughs> Reeds are one of those things, like you said, they're very variable and very personal. And, and you, you have, you know, Bob Spring at one end of, the, end of the spectrum who makes all of his own reeds like a crazed man that he is. And then you have me at the other end where I just pull them out of the box and play them. And then there's all the stuff in between with the new types of plastic reeds. So, but they, they supposedly last very long. Everyone I, who uses them tells me that. They last long if you rotate them. Right. Chris Nichols was using them. I don't know if he still is. Chris was using them. Six uh, yes, I still I still use them. I play on a cane reed uh, once every year for our studio class on reed adjustment. And I've been using the same one for six years. So I play on that reed <laughs> once a year. And you sound beautiful <laughs> when I hear you. I think you sound fabulous, Anna. You, you got me into it, Kathy. Oh, that's I really right. like them. Yeah. Yeah. I do also want to add that not all synthetic uh, reeds are straight made out of plastic or uh, that kind of blend. The Dario Venn reed is actually a blend of synthetic material and ground cane. So it does require moisture as does the Silverstein um, reed. So there's some differences there. You do have to keep those reeds moist. Um, I think Legere is a bit different. So uh, that's always something to keep in mind. I know someone mentioned the lack of moisture needed for the reed, but it's not always true. So make sure that you understand how those reeds. And again, the staff at these companies can tell you all about the product and the best way to use them and adjust them and and sizing because there's quarter sizes and things like that, uh, especially getting into the bass clarinet realm. So that quarter sizing is brilliant, especially like I have younger students than a lot of you guys. But when they're starting to get into the altissimo and a number three just isn't cutting it and it's flat and it just doesn't want to do it, but they're not ready for a three and a half yet. That's just brilliant to go to that three and a quarter. That's been so helpful to some of my high school students. I think that that's just a benefit of technology. Like we can better tell the strength of the reed and how resistant it is now with the tools that we have. So we were always making three and a quarter reeds, but they were just labeled as either three or three and a half. And so it's really cool that the technology has allowed us to make the strength windows into a measurable smaller window so that we're able to play more of the reeds that we get in a box than we were before. I think that's amazing. I'm really impressed with our with our read um, sponsored partners and everybody that works at the ICAN reads. So as clarinet is due, we've devolved into a read discussion <laughs> and burned 15 minutes. So we actually <laughs> now can head over to the YouTube link and get ready for this concert. So uh, I'm placing that link in the chat. We'll see you over for the student performance. You're gonna absolutely be blown away by, by these students, they sound incredible um, because students are the, the upcoming professionals and you'll definitely hear that in their playing. So please, uh, we'll see you in the chat over on YouTube. I'm going to close this session and get ready for that one. And uh, thank you so much to our state chairs again. And we're excited to have you share in this uh, Chloridoscope 2023. See you. Would you put the